Hello, 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 hello. I'm drinking some water out of a can. <laughs> I like bubbly water, so it's my thing. Um, hello. Um, I haven't seen it um, or seen everybody or been on a vlog in in, uh, in about a week. Um, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, if you are on my blog, uh, Mary Girl in a Weird World, you see what I've been doing and what I've been up to, um, which is just enjoying myself immensely. That's what I've been doing and stuff. Um, just enjoying this uh, time of having a digital detox and everything. And uh, I go back on every once in a while, but not for too long. Uh, it's easy to get um, sucked back in. I was just going back on the day trying to figure out who uh, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis were. Listen, I'm from Seattle, and I know they're from Seattle, but really, I had just, I keep hearing about them, and I keep thinking, who are these two dudes? And stuff. Still don't really know. Haven't heard any of the music, so I guess I'll have to figure that out. But what I've been talking about, at least what I'm going to be talking about for the next couple of weeks while I'm on this digital detox every week um, and having a little mini-series is... Um, is the good guy. And uh, what I've been talking about is the, around the good guy is just sort of all these things about guys that women um, aren't really sure about. You know, the kind of stuff that makes you kind of huh and you're just, you're not really sure. You know, he seems okay, but there may be some things that maybe you need to investigate or ask more questions, you know, and stuff. It's easy to, to, to kind of you know, diss on a, a bad guy, you know, and stuff. You can you can tell who he is. I mean, his stuff is obvious, all out in the open. He he's not trying to hide, you know, and stuff. You can tell who he is. So it's not really, you know, it's not this thing of having to guess, oh, this guy is, you know, a jerk. He he just acts like one, you know, and stuff. But something with the guy that's sorta seems like an okay guy but you're not really sure about, you're just sort of wondering, well, is he okay? Is he not okay? You know, and stuff. And I know for many of us, we may end up in a relationship with somebody that when we first met him, he seemed really great. He seemed really nice, you know, um, like a nice person. But then there's other stuff that comes along and you're like, okay. So today I want to talk about Mr. Nice Guy. Or the guy that thinks you owe him something. Um, and there are all these nice guys. And, you know, and I, I love to hear guys say, you know what? I, I'm a nice guy. And I, I always think to myself, yeah, every guy thinks he's a nice guy. Even bad guys think they're nice guys. So that's kind of doesn't mean anything. And I'm really suspicious of the moniker and when somebody says somebody is nice as soon as people say somebody is nice my ears start perking up and I'm just like okay I need to pay attention to this because I'm very suspicious of nice people to me and I've said it before there's a difference in someone being nice and someone being kind they are not the same thing I'm nice to people okay you know there are lots of people that I'm nice to that I may not really care for you know and stuff but I'm still nice and stuff there's lots of times you know I'm I'm nice on occasions and I meet somebody and I may not really care for them but I'm still nice and stuff so when someone says someone is nice my suspicions go up is that usually they may be manipulative. Nice people are usually, and people who insist all the time how nice they are, are usually manipulative people, okay? You know, keep on the lookout and stuff. Um, and, you know, you have to know what a manipulator is and be sure that you watch out for them. I've got lots of stuff um, when I talk about emotional abuse and stuff, lots of stuff about manipulators, uh, particularly because my ex-husband was one. And so I know manipulative behavior when I see it. He was also a nice guy and stuff, you know. And um, then uh, once we got in deeper into our relationship, I figured out, oh, he's not that nice. He's just manipulative and narcissistic and stuff, you know. Now, you may not have a, uh, a issue with somebody being narcissistic, but 
a manipulator this can usually be emotionally abusive and things like that because usually when it comes to manipulative people and the reason they manipulate is because they think someone owes them something and nice guys get really upset if they um, if you're at some place and they buy you a drink or they give you a compliment or they take you on a date and they pay for the date and they don't get what they think they're supposed to get then they can get really nasty and sort of mean and that's when you know you've got a manipulator listen when people give stuff they give stuff not to receive stuff in return if a guy takes you out on a date and he pays for dinner and you go to a show or you go somewhere and at the end of the day he's expecting a kiss or he's expecting you know for you to jump into bed with him and all that stuff listen he was never doing anything to you know to be nice to you. He was just doing something in hopes that he would get something in return. And really to me, that's not giving. That's never giving. Okay. When you give, you're not looking to get stuff in return. Even at the beginning of a relationship, you're not doing that. And you would never, never as a gentleman, pressure any woman into doing anything she is uncomfortable with. Okay. You know, any guy that does that, I would kick him out on his duff. He'd be bouncing. Okay and stuff, um, you know, after that. Because no gentleman would ever pressure a woman into doing anything um, that she is not comfortable with, okay? So you have, to, uh, you have to be careful when you hear the moniker of nice guy or when a guy says that he's nice or when another guy you know says, you know, I have a friend that's really nice or a girl says, I want to set you up with my friend. They're really nice. That really means nothing to me. There are things you need to be watching out for. First of all, do they have any kindness, any compassion? Are they understanding? Are they listeners, you know, and stuff? Do they honor what it is that you say? Do they honor your boundaries? you know, and stuff. And, um, I remember, um, maybe a little bit before I started dating my husband, I'd gone out with a guy and he was a nice guy and stuff. And we'd gone out a couple of times and, uh, you know, I met him and, and we went out for dinner and everything. And, uh, and he was just, he was really funny and, and really nice and everything and seemed okay. And, uh, so we went out for another, um, we went out on another date and stuff. And then, um, he started to, you know, people will tell you who they are. You just have to, I, I say that all the time. You just have to sort of listen. You just have to wait for them to say it. And usually when they start talking, don't go into complete shock. Like, oh my God, I can't believe. Just don't say anything because you want to get the whole story, okay? So just sort of be like, uh-huh, yeah. And they'll start revealing because people want to talk. They want to tell you about themselves. Particularly narcissists, they want to tell you about themselves. They want to tell you all these wonderful things about them. But if you hear everything, if you're listening very carefully, you can pick apart that conversation and know that they are narcissists. So, he starts to tell me about how he had met his ex-girlfriend. And he was just talking about, it was maybe third or fourth date, and he was just talking about how he had met her and saying that he had met her while she was on a date with another guy. Ding. Um, so, I was like, okay. And so, then he goes on to say, yeah, she dropped her phone number in my lap and stuff. And this guy was, he was a nice looking guy, but he wasn't no Brad Pitt. I mean, he wasn't even Brad Pitt's sort of unattractive co cousin, okay? Um, he was just, you know, he was okay looking and stuff. So, I just found it a little bit unbelievable that some woman was so drawn to him that she dropped her number in his lap while she was on a date with some other guy and stuff. And I'm telling you, and he was maybe as tall as I am. So, I'm 5'8". So, he was maybe 5'9". So, he wasn't a tall, you know, he wasn't a tall guy or anything like that. It was just, it wasn't like he was tall and good looking or nothing like that. And I just kept I'm thinking, really? And I was just kind of like, really? And so, you know, and so he goes on because like I say, they like to talk. And so he goes on and he starts telling me that story and, you know, and all this stuff and how they got together after that. And so I thought, okay, that told me something about his moral code. And then he proceeds at another point, um, 
to tell me another story of how a woman was chasing after him and she stalked him and it was all in the papers and everything. And he was some kind of, the thing is, he was some kind of guy. He had a regular job, you know, a, a, a good regular job, but he was some kind of pinball wizard, okay, and stuff. And he did pinball championships and all this stuff. And he was talking about how great he was at pinball, not that I even cared and stuff. But, you know, he was just telling me how awesome he was at pinball and how she got in a newspaper and started talking about, you know, a pinball person and he knew she was talking about him and how she had stalked him at his job and took a job there. And then it dawned on me after that second story he told, and I'm telling you, I know he didn't know he was telling me this because people normally don't know that they're telling you stuff. Okay. They're just talking. Then by the second story, by the time he told me the second story, it dawned on me. Ding. He's a narcissist. I'm dating a narcissist. He was really inclined to think he was a really, uh, really great guy. And I did something uh, maybe a, a date or two later. And, um, and I was going to, it was Mother's Day, and I was going to a Mother's Day lunch for my mom. And he got really offended that I wouldn't spend the day with him, that I was going to see my mom for a Mother's Day lunch. That was the last time we talked. And because uh, I just thought, okay, dude, we haven't even been dating, you know, what is this, maybe a week or two and stuff. And you're talking about, you know, me dissing my family to, yeah, I don't even know you like that and stuff. So that's how I knew. And he was a nice guy. And I'm sure whoever met him after that thought he was a nice guy and everything. And maybe they didn't pick up on the narcissist part like I did. But since I had been married to a narcissist, I knew how they worked. And maybe she didn't pick up on the narcissist part. But I did. And stuff, you know. And that's what you have to be careful for when you go for the nice guy. They usually think they're owed something. That they've done all this stuff. That they've taken you out. That they've spent money on you. And now you're supposed to devote yourself to them, devote your time to them, devote your body to them, give everything up for them and all this sort of stuff. Um, not that they're doing the same thing for you and stuff. Not that they may be doing anything for you at all. But he's nice, you know, and stuff. And he thinks because he's nice that, you know, he's he's the, the best dude ever, you know, and stuff. And really, ladies, what I'm warning about is women getting really excited about minimum requirements when it comes to men because for some reason, a lot of ladies... And um, I'm sure a lot of a lot of black women I'm talking to on here get really excited about minimum requirements, basic stuff, you know, like it's just the best thing ever. And um, basic stuff is nothing to write home about. Um, basic stuff is nothing for you to get too excited about and everything. There's stuff that, yeah, guys are supposed to be doing. That's nothing to be giving, pe giving out cookies to people for and all that sort of stuff. Um, those are just basic requirements, okay? A guy being kind and being a nice person is what he's supposed to be. That's not special, okay? Um, that's not something you get a um, scout scout badge for. Um, it is something that you're supposed to actually do, okay, uh, Mr. Nice Guy. So the next time you meet a nice guy and somebody's telling you how nice he is or somebody is talking about how nice he is or somebody said, yeah, He's a really nice guy. I knew him from way back when. Please be careful with that information because, and take it into account when you hear the word nice, that he may not actually be kind, that he may not actually be giving. He may be actually a selfish person. He may be a person that's trying to do things for himself and get stuff for himself because, you know, I mean, you know, nice guys know. Okay, just like any other guy knows that so many women are so dazzled by niceness, you know, this basic quality and stuff that they know that they can get a lot of things from desperate, thirsty women. Okay, they know. And uh, and trust and believe, ladies, 
as as usual, as the same thing with serial monogamous, men will use whatever they need to use to their advantage. So um, you be ahead of the game, okay, and stuff. Forewarned is forearmed, okay, and uh, so I'll be talking to you guys next week, and next week I'll be talking about, you know, I've got a good job, and I've been to college, okay, which is like, yeah, really? Um, so uh, we'll, we'll talk to you next week. All right, bye-bye.